the struggle is real, right? Many of us feel like this or like this, or perhaps we feel a lot of emotions all at the same time. Did you know that the most common illnesses worldwide are depression and anxiety? More than 264 million people globally of all ages have depression and anxiety plagues 40 million adults in the United States every year. Considering this pandemic we've been in for over a year now, imagine how these numbers have increased. When we think about research focused on the struggle with depression and anxiety among the deaf and hard of hearing population, statistical data is extremely limited. For my dissertation research, I studied deaf experiences, an exploration of the psychological and emotional well-being of American deaf adults. In my study, 98% of participants were born to hearing parents and those parents did not learn sign language as a method of communicating with their child. The development of healthy mental and emotional well-being begins within the family system. Imagine the struggle of a deaf individual whose formative years and early life experiences lacked effective communication and barriers to language acquisition, which is essential to developing expressive communication. For this reason, and many others, but for this one reason in particular, clearly illustrates why the deaf and hard of hearing community are at a higher risk for mental and emotional problems than the general population. There is also a severe limitation in access to resources and direct services to help mitigate these problems. So, I am grateful to have this opportunity to provide equal access in this context because depression and anxiety have no cultural or linguistic barriers. The struggle is real for all people groups. So how do we live fully now with these struggles such as depression, and anxiety. One thing I like to tell my clients is, embrace your crazy. The word crazy typically has a negative connotation to it. But what I mean in this is embrace the way your brain operates and communicates with you. The brain is probably the most complex system known to us and the seat of our cognitive functions. It is vital that we understand, accept, and learn to manage the way our brain communicates to us. We are all unique, and in that, we all have our own crazy. How does your brain let you know that you are overwhelmed? How does your brain tell you that you are anxious? How does your brain tell you that you're offended? These are the type of important questions 
we must consider to understand ourselves in those moments that we feel off. We must learn to be mindful of self, embrace who we are, and understand how we operate. Instead of ignoring these internal struggles, we must face them. We must embrace your crazy. Embracing your crazy is self-acceptance. Through this form of self-acceptance, we can take steps to avoid increasing or exacerbating the struggles of our past pain and shift to having a forward focus. By embracing the complexities of our crazy brains, we increase the potential to live fully now. We shift our focus from the why of our past pain to the future forward focus of how. How do I need to change my life so that my past pain no longer dictate my future? The goal is not fighting your life, disregarding your past pain, but living your life with your past pains. Learn how the crazy brain communicates and operates with you. Learn how to manage those internal thoughts and emotions in a healthy way that gets you moving forward, that helps you to have that future forward focus. How do I embrace my crazy, you ask? I will share with you one of my favorite mindfulness techniques that I use therapeutically with clients who present with depression and anxiety types of symptomology. It is the stop mindfulness technique created by Dr. John Gabbett Zinn. Stop is a wonderful tool because it's simple to apply in many different life scenarios. Stop is not a rigid technique. You can rearrange the letters to fit the specific scenario you are experiencing at that moment. You might implement stop, S-T-O-P, or top, T-O-P, or SOP, S-O-P, or even S-T-P. Most importantly, this mindfulness technique is easy to do, it's good for you, good for others, and ultimately will make you feel better. The S is to stop what you're doing at that moment, literally. Sometimes we bombard right over the warning signs our brain is trying to communicate to us. These warning signs are our thoughts and emotions and physiological responses. Ignoring these can exacerbate the situation S allows us to slow down physically to get a handle on what's going on internally. T is to take deep, slow, controlled breaths, which allows us to regulate the autonomic nervous system 
and those automatic physiological responses such as heart racing, shallow breathing, etc. O is to observe your thoughts and feelings. O helps us to get a grip on the madness and the twisted thinking in our minds. Checking our thoughts and emotions allows us to separate fact from fiction. And P is to proceed positively. Ask yourself, what steps can I take to have a future focus and move forward in a positive direction? Self-acceptance, learning how your brain communicates with you, and using mindfulness tools such as STOP, this is how we live fully now. This is how you embrace your crazy.